I wrote a book called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse, which was, you know, a, a series of drawings. You know, the book went, went down okay when it came on the market, so we decided to make a film. And I'm not a filmmaker. <laughs> Cara, the producer, and Peter Bainton, the co-director, had to teach me how to make a film or how, what, it, what making a film was all about. And that was incredible of them to do it. Slowly, it was a team, really. I think that's what I was drawn into, was a, 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 a very gentle, loving team. We made it together. Um, and often we didn't even know really what roles we had. You know, it didn't really matter to us. So Isabel, um, just at the beginning of the pandemic, emailed me and said, do you fancy doing a performance with me? Just you drawing and me playing some music. And I said, OK. But obviously that was before anything dark happened with lockdown or, you know, all those things. So we began, like, talking quite a lot from then on, really. And she had a book. She said she had a book. I'd never met her before, but she was in emotionally engaged with the story already. You know, we talked a lot. She'd helped me with the music for the audiobook, which I did under some cushions, still in lockdown. And so, obviously, you know, the more we spoke, the more she and I sort of journeyed together with the characters. It became obvious she'd be great to do the score because she, you know, she loved, loved the story and loved the characters, so it fitted with us, really. And she's brilliant, you know. Of course she is. There are a few moments where I um, had tunes in my, in my head and I would record them and send them to her on WhatsApp. And then two days later, she would return the message with a file. And on the file was something she'd, it was like alchemy. So I would hum badly down my phone and she would, like tennis, respond with a beautiful piece of music. Well, it's kind of a dream to imagine. I mean, I remember when we went, we went to the rehearsals and the recording of the, of the score, I cried my whole way through it. So I, I don't know what it's going to be like now with the film and the score live with an audience. It would be pretty unique. I hope the book encourages you um, to, to be kind to yourself and to each other and, and ask for help when you need it. And I, I've always hoped the film would do the same thing. So when I, when I hear people's responses to it, in various ways, it gives it gives me a deep sense of I, I kind of, of of gratitude and pleasure that we made something that gives people you know helps people feel certain things. And I'm always staggered that I, I've sort of managed to be involved in something that could do that. A lady wrote to me the other day saying that her grandson, who's five, when they went shopping turned to her, her, his granny and looked up at her when she's looking in, in, the, in the window and said, I hope you know that you're enough just as you are. I hope you know that. And she said that she was overwhelmed with emotion because she realised that she'd never really fully understood that or known that or felt that, and that her five-year-old grandson was introducing her to this idea. And she said she cried. And she said, I'm, I'm starting the journey of realizing that, that he's right, that it's true. And she also said, I want to just tell you that he's learned all the words in the film and he will take these words with him, hopefully, for the rest of his life.